organization so that's then creating a new working class so you have this engagement and escape but the, the, the momentum of this is towards the eradication of labor as a source of wealth and that's something I want to bring out and the third aspect I want to emphasize is securitization uh, these previous two elements uh, lead to a kind of political changes, development of political working classes, uh, political organisation, and then there's a need to respond to this. Some of them are going to, the other things I'm going to deal with in relationship to that, but right now I want to mention here securitisation. The first part of securitisation is the issuing of shares in companies. So you issue shares, that means that instead of having an owner-manager, direct kind of simple capitalism, you then start developing uh, shareholders so you, you develop away from the immediate relationship to the worker and into the securities and so into also into finance organisations so you get this movement away from again this is engagement and escape and the, this is the kind of epitome of engagement and escape securitisation uh, you escape from particular working classes and you end up confronting general working classes. Okay? And part of that process also it leads to the generation of bubbles. So uh, as the more you have securitization of various forms that are removed from labour, they become uh, locations for capital searching some kind of return away from labour, but you can't, in a capitalist system, you can't get any return away from labour, you, all you do is generate bubbles and speculation, and we've seen, maybe I won't have time to talk about them, but there's the dot-com boom, there's the subprime, but there's been the Asian crisis, Japanese crisis, 1987 uh, boom and crash, um, oh, the dollar, etc., a whole load of stuff. Um, so I'm going to just run through those things again and make some comments about them. So the first one I said is the development of new labour out of agriculture. Uh, this is part of a process of urbanisation and creating of a working class. Um, this can be used to undermine particular working classes at particular times. So you, if you organise, well we're going to bring in people from the countryside. Uh, it used to happen in London. So sometimes just solve a a strike by bringing in a whole bunch of workers from somewhere else, a village just dumped in the middle of London. Um, Millwall, part of Millwall was formed like that. I think it's Millwall. Um, but that process comes to an end eventually, so this is pointing towards the limit of the system here. Yeah. Uh, 1871 in, in Britain, basically the prospects for developing new labour out of agriculture come to an end. And at that point, um, the British bourgeoisie have to face a working class, they have to face an existing working class and they therefore have to face political problems. They have to deal with political problems and they have to do something else which is associated with it. They have to deal with the costs of reproduction of workers. And this is very important. So you've got two things, the political thing and the cost of reproduction of workers. Because when you're getting them off the agriculture, they're, they're basically coming with costs borne by some other force, i.e. in agriculture. But once you're dealing with a working class that you can't replace, you have to deal with those costs. So then you start getting the movement towards a welfare system in Britain. And it's got these two, two elements, costs, dealing with costs. But once you're dealing with costs, you're talking about needs, and you've got political organisation attached to that, 
So you're dealing with a political organisation dealing with needs. Which can, to begin with, it can't just simply be the cost of reproduction, i.e. housing, education, health, all these kind of things come out of that kind of issue. Um, well, it comes to an end in Britain in 1871, but of course, Britain isn't the whole world, they did think so at the time, but it's not the whole world, there is development, there are other sources of labour. So then there's the whole process having to start again of development of labour. Now one solution uh, was America, this is a very kind of potted history, uh, but I wanted to mention America. Here, here's a development of new labour again. Uh, America, the great um, destination for emigration, source of labour then from Eastern Europe, for example, immigration, and then you get this booming capitalism in America. Employment increasing, and so on. Um, but, this is an ongoing process, um, and that process, I'm jumping ahead, that process in America has effectively come to an end. You won't get many demands for uh, new labour in, in America now. If not, I'd say it's the reverse. In the last 10 years, just the last 10 years, there's been no net increase in the number of jobs in America. The last recovery they had was called a jobless recovery. This is a system then that has reached a certain point. It's reached a kind of end point. Or it's not quite end, but it's a kind of limit, a pinch point, if you like. At the same time, though, of course, we've got new labour being active, developed, but where? In China. So you've now got this odd relationship between America and China moving production away to a new kind of right, okay, um, production in China. Key thing about production in China is again the costs are borne elsewhere, not by the firms. There's no welfare, even though it's a communist society. Um, so the whole process is going to happen again. Now notice here. Um, and this is why, well I think this is important, this is a process of globalisation. But this is a good process, from my point of view anyway, because it's the development of a working class. There are always going to be limits here. And once you've developed a working class in China, there's not much else to do. Okay, we've got Brazil, India of course, uh, Turkey and places like that. But what we're beginning to see is an end point there. There is, a, there is no kind of working class on Mars that we can develop or anything like that. Um, and it's only in the last, I'm not sure if it's the last 10 years, 5 years or something, that over 50% of the world uh, now live in towns. It's only just happened. And that's a significant moment, I would say. It's a signpost of where we're going. Okay? Um, all right, well, machinery. i better say something quickly about that. Um, I've already said it really. Um, if, you think, if you look at America now, I mean, incredible productivity, but they're not going to be providing new jobs. Again, the, well, accepting service, stuff like that, but there's no net increase in, in the number of workers. We've got a rising organic composition uh, for the whole world in the end, and what this is leading to is the eradication of labour as a source of wealth. Um, Talking about a revolution, oh no. Talking about a revolution.